It's the Gretzky episode 99. It's the ultimate deck podcast. Need a show about outdoor living? This is where it's at. With your host, Shane Chapman and Way Red. Thank you for tuning in. Now let the show begin. Yeah, yeah. The ultimate deck podcast. Let's go. Episode 99. Did you ever think we'd get here, Wade, when we started this thing? No. <laughs> no, no. I didn't. I, like, no. <laughs> Flat out, nope. I thought episode four, and then it would peter off. Like, not not a knock on us, but like we don't see a ton of stuff through. You know what I mean? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on your perspective. Yeah. I mean, you do have two stores now. Right. Saw that through. Saw that through. Have you ever had a 99, a Gretzky from Tim Hortons? No. What? What are you talking about? Nine, oh my God. Am I the only one that knows nine about cream, this? Nine cream, nine sugar? <laughs> yeah. Uh, nope. Go to Tim Hortons. We should have done that and today. Order a Gretzky. I've never had it either, but I yeah, know could, about it. The yeah. worst thing I ever saw was someone get a French vanilla with three cream and three sugar. Uh, that's terrible. Yeah. So yeah, the Gretzky's a thing. You can order a Gretzky and they will give you nine cream, nine sugar. Okay, let's do nine, that nine. today. Do it today. Yeah, let's get that done. We should sample that next podcast. Or I guess 101 will have to be like, what do you try? Yeah. Try uh, different types of coffees from like different places. 99s, Gretzky's. 99s. It'd be hard to get it at 100. We'll be able to do the, the Gretzky at the 100s podcast. That's true. Yeah. Um, I don't think anybody knows about it. So, no, it's a well kept secret. Uh, today, <laughs> we're talking about helical piles and five reasons why you should do them and three reasons why you might not want to do them. Are we just getting right into this? Is uh, whoa. Sub two minutes and you're going to start talking about this stuff? No, I, I was just kind of leading up to I, like, I know you want to get this thing kicked off. And let's I like, do I, this. <laughs> figured we wouldn't waste time today. But okay. So, before we get to the worldly news, um, Quigley posted, did you see that? Post? Did you take? Oh, okay, see. I'll talk about it then. You talk about it. Quigley Dex submitted his own worldly news to us today. It was a story about <laughs> a rat. <laughs> what? Okay. So the worldly news is taken off. We are okay. getting input. There was a story about a rat, and I, did, I forget what country it is, but it, the rat was just awarded a gold medal or whatever the distinction was. It sounds like Russia. For Malaysia. He's a landmine rat. He's a rat that they've trained to no detect way. landmines. And he has successfully detected, what was it? I think 29 landmines and 25 like unexploded munitions, whatever those are, some other type of explosives. So this rat has been responsible for finding IEDs. and allowing them to detonate or remove, safely remove okay. over 50 <clears throat> landmines. Wow. How does now, he, how isn't he dead? Because he he's, knows to not step on them. He's a, he's a gold <laughs> he's star a rat. rat, Bryce. I mean, he's yeah. not just they any do, rat. They do get out of rat traps pretty easily. They Those do. They're smart. Work. Rats are smart. Rats are smart. So, anyways, and it's, tasty. Uh, what? I don't know about that. Gross. Um, is it Scott that is A.E. Carpentry? Is that who that is? Mm. Is that his name? Scott? Scott. Did I get that right? A.E. Carpentry out of Saskatoon? No, it's Mike, right? <laughs> I, I was like, Scott is precision construction. Yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I was like, I was like, yeah, no, Scott's precision. That's I knew why I was off my game today, but I was like, he's <laughs> like full blown I've met dementia. He's here. just saying names now. Yeah, <laughs> he's never had coffee before in his life. Holy what? Smokes, that's why you're looking at that. He's never had coffee, Mike. Yeah, I was right. I knew it was. <laughs> no, I was you like, right. No, I said Scott, and then I was like, wait, no, it's not Scott. It's Mike. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was Mike. Yeah, <laughs> you eventually came around to right, but not before offending I, him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least I didn't call him like Peter or something. You know, <laughs> way worse name. Um, great. Now we're gonna have a Peter in here too. <laughs> hey, I almost stuck my foot. I almost stuck my foot in my mouth yesterday. Actually, I kind of did put it in my mouth, but I think I clawed it back pretty well. So, a guy came in to buy some Q-Tex stain there, and he was like, he he ran out in the middle of doing the fence, and so he came back in yesterday because we got it back in. He picked up the four gallons and. He's like, yeah, now I have to just kind of pick up where I left off and hope everything matches, whatever. Like, oh, it'll, it should be fine. Uh, so on and so forth. I was like, but this one time, though, this guy came in here. <laughs> it was him. And I forgot it was him. <laughs> and I was oh, like, no. Yeah, I was like, I was like, oh, this will be fine. But we had this one guy come in here and he wanted to mix and match Mesmer's with. And then it, right at that moment, I said, I was, I was like, like uh, I think this is him. I was like, wait, that was you. And then I have to like play it down. And I was like, that was you, right? And he's like, yeah, that was me. And I was like, yeah. I mean, What like, a crazy idea. You know, I mean, it could have worked, but I just... It worked. <laughs> so anyway, um, oops. Um, yeah, so cool rat story. Now we got this. Just so you know, Mom, I'm working on something very, very big, very important, 
You're going to be very proud. It's the worldly news. Before, we, while he's pulling that up, though, Mike is saying coffee's gross. I was wondering, like, Mike's a, he's a pretty big gym rat, I think. I was wondering if that was, like, a healthy choice. He just doesn't, like, I don't know, diuretic drugs in his drinks or something. But sounds like just doesn't like to taste it. Hmm. So I never used to either until I had an office job. When I started working at Sastel and it was like, uh, no, that's what you do here now. Drink you coffee. go to Tim Hortons and you get coffee yeah. at your desk. You don't. That's because you were trying to find out how to get away from the desk. It's an excuse. To yeah, a hundred percent. hundred percent. We work construction. Like you don't need an excuse to get away from the desk. You're like, you're outside. Yeah. 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 Get so right. anyways, I started then, I went from drinking no coffee to the point now that in our business of 12 people, I'm the one that people make fun of the most for drinking so much coffee. You drink 12 coffees. <laughs> yeah. Like there's, there's days I'll have three big, like, yeah, three extra large coffees. I've come around and like, I used to drink, uh, double doubles and then it was down to like uh, regular one cream, one sugar. And now I'm just like black coffee. Yeah. You I made like the leap that. to black. Every once in a while, I'm forced to have black. Not forced. Every once in a while, coffee shows up and there's no cream and sugars, and I choose to have it just black. And I don't mind it, but I do prefer... I'm at the one cream, one sugar state. But actually, what I do now, uh, Bryce is in on this trend. Yeah. The oat milk, but the vanilla flavored oat milk, just that. It's good. So good. Yeah. <laughs> He's Who needs never creamer? Been to the gym either. So. <laughs> no coffee, no gym. <laughs> I've never been to the gym either. I eat candy. Uh, says Scott from AE Carpentry. No. <laughs> Mike. Okay, well, let's get some worldly okay, news. Okay, let's going. get on to the worldly news. There's lots of poop in the news today. Good. Unfortunately. Oh, good. Those are my favorites. Uh, firefighters battle blaze from 22 ton pile of chicken poop in Britain. What? Yeah. 22 tons? Yeah, firefighters in Britain said crews from three towns spent three hours extinguishing the flames from a blaze that started. With a 22 ton pile of chicken manure. Gross. <laughs> Gross. That's a lot of poop. And apparently it stunk. Mm. Surprise, you, surprise. Yeah. Wasn't this a real thing that one of the bridges in Saskatoon a couple years ago, they shut down because they had to do yes. shit removal yeah, from the bridge from because there was so much weight from all the pigeon shit on this one bridge that it was mm -hmm. causing, like there was cause for concern on for structural reasons because there was tons of poop on it gross so they shut the bridge down they had crews under there basically chiseling shit off the bridge yeah isn't that <laughs> that's nuts hey i think i'd quit on fire i think i'd collect serb instead of doing that there's no so yeah. here's the crazy here's the even crazier part of this story is that the pile of chicken shit spontaneously combusted yeah what? so that makes sense to me yeah because if you get a little bit of moisture in there poof, up it goes right that's the same as bales like yeah. Bales will spontaneously combust if you put them in, like if you bale them when yeah. it's too wet, right? Yeah, well, they say like when they, yeah, when the piles get too big, the heat just can't escape and then it gets right. trapped and lights itself on fire. Oof. Really? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Now well, you, that's giving me my new thing when my, now you know, when my 13 year old doesn't flush a toilet, I'm like, <laughs> get in here before you burn the house down. <laughs> uh, okay. Number two, old TV knocked out villages broadband every day at the same time for 18 months an old tv yes so i'm so distracted today i have to piece these stories together in my mind after he says them because i'm just elsewhere <laughs> okay so another like, did you say old tv yeah I said I old tv it. just, look just at said it. it it's easier to focus you just <laughs> yeah, stare yeah, right yeah. Yeah. Look, stop yeah. looking at that okay one. here i am okay so <laughs> what? for the last 18 months at exactly the same time every day everybody's internet in the entire village would shut off. Okay. And engineers, they replaced thousands of miles of cable. Oh my God. Can you imagine when they, they found out who it, out. it is? It's like, freaking Mike. Yeah. And the whole town just lynches them. Yep. That's exactly what happened. At 7 a.m. every day, like clockwork, it happened. And it was due to a very, very, very old TV set, like 1950s. So I don't what's understand the how. Yeah. What's yeah. the science behind it? Was, uh, it was, uh, like it was electrical interference. EMI. Yeah. So much EMI off that TV that it was wiping out the it town's wipes out internet. The town's internet. <laughs> and the guy's got cancer now. Yeah. Wow. Well, or he's a superhero. He's an old, old dude, apparently. He's yeah, he's 106. He's 178. <laughs> he's <a man laughs> and nobody's questioned why yeah. why he's still jogging. <laughs> like that's funny. Um, just to catch up while you're looking up the next story, uh, 
pre whoops premium uh yards and garages says black coffee makes me a better carpenter 100 <laughs> percent. i agree <laughs> Dan totally. 0909 says hopefully your job site has a place to go when you get older it's a problem <laughs> Eric Teru says, desk work is the number one reason to start drinking coffee. Yep. I agree with that. And Quigley K. Borel says, I like the taste of coffee, actually. <laughs> no, I like the taste of coffee, especially when it's diluted with whiskey. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whiskey diluted with coffee. Even better. However, the last story. <laughs> Maybe you had whiskey. Whiskey makes me fight. Do you have whiskey this morning? <laughs> yeah, I, I must have. I must have. Sneaking it in. I was coffee. in a great. This is, the stupid thing is, I feel like I was in a great mood this morning. This was going to be so good, and then now I'm mad. And even when I left the house, I was not even mad about it. Anyway, without digging up and sewering my wife on this podcast now, I'm just not was, in a great it, mood anymore. It was your fault, anyways. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I accept maybe 20% of the responsibility. It's a 50 50 release? 50 50. So, the last poop story of the day. Man made knife from frozen poop and won a IG Nobel Prize. Mm-hmm. What's an IG that's Nobel enough, Prize? That's enough it's internet. like a funny Nobel Prize, I guess. Oh, that's enough internet for today. So, did, were you specifically <laughs> searching out poop stories today? No, or? that was just, that was all that was in the. Unless you want to talk about lottery winners. And it was a shitty animals. day for news. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's like the IG Nobel. Where's the, where's the, yeah, right there. There you go. There you go. Uh, yeah. So it was about, uh, it was about an anthropological um, entomologist who decided that. For what purpose was he making a shit knife? Because uh, um, it was because there's a story of an Inuit man in Canada who made a knife out of his own shit. And uh, saved accepted. his own life. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Saved his own life from a what? From a- from starvation because he could like cut, oh, like kill, sh- like kill he, shit. I thought he fought a polar no. bear. Yeah, with the shit. Probably <laughs> dove no. into the ocean and killed a beluga whale or something. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's enough of that. That's enough of that. I feel like ninety nine should have been less shitty, but <gasps> here we go. Here we go. What, you, what else you got? Oh, wow. What else, what else you got? Hey, you're it's on a rolling shot now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. More puns. Even my joke was really funny. Fire, fire up the puns, <laughs> boys. Let's go. Okay, uh, right to it. Pros and cons of helical screw piles. Bum, bum, bum. So uh, when we were brainstorming what the topic's going to be for the next 10 or 12 weeks, uh, I just kind of threw out randomly. I was like, I don't know. One could be like, one could even be like, five reasons why screw piles are great and like three why they're not or something mm-hmm. and we wrote that down and then and then bryce does instagram stories this week is like coming up five reasons why <laughs> three reasons why not and i was like whoa, whoa, whoa those are just numbers i didn't actually have that specific number of reasons but we managed to make it we fit managed and work short and succinct and there's a list so that's really good oh, so good on the list do you want to start with the pros or the cons why do you, why do, you do pro and then a con? yeah because then you get a pro odd and a number. Con, pro. pro and a con, pro and a con. I like that style. And then we end with a pro. Yeah. I like that style quite a bit. Fine. Here we go. No numbers. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, I have to do numbers. How do I, I don't know what to do with my hands now. Okay. Pro. pro. Yeah. That works. That's better. Just do that, pro. Quick install. Yep. I feel like this is one of the biggest pros. Mm-hmm. There, of, of the five we put down, there's three that really resonate with me, but this is one of them. The, the other two we just made up because Bryce said we had to get five. So <laughs> yeah. here we go. You got, we got three strong and and then a couple strong against. <laughs> <laughs> but how long does it take? So this is very this is regional too. The answer to all these is going to be somewhat regionally affected depending on how deep your piles are supposed to go to. Absolutely. And like we're in a place where... These make the most amount of sense possible. There's actually times when when it gets really close to hell freezing over because it went through the earth in Saskatchewan and almost froze it. Yeah. yeah. That's where, like, we have a legit shot of freezing hell over Satan, here. <laughs> Satan's like, shit, cold up in Saskatchewan today. I can feel it on my arse. <laughs> I'm going to have to get somewhere else. So, uh, so a quick install. So here, like... Like we said, this is going to come up a few times. If you're in an area like Washington where your pile depth needs to be 12 inches, right. well, it doesn't take too long to dig a 12-inch hole either, 12 no. by 12 or 16 by 12 no. hole, and fill it with a little bit of concrete. That doesn't take 
very long. But this point is if you're in a market that needs to go deeper, so Ontario, you know, four foot depth in Ontario. So they're driving piles seven, eight feet deep. But even like even into the States, right? Minnesota and yeah, kind of the Northeast. Yeah. Generally. Yeah. Or here, I would have just said north, but, or here, the, the obnoxious here ness of our frost depth and our mm-hmm. pile requirements here, where mm-hmm. you're like a concrete pile to be effective is 16 plus feet deep. It's wild. And people don't even believe us when we say that. Yep. Uh, that takes a while mm-hmm. to dig that hole out and fill it with concrete and, and form a pile. Yeah. These things drive in literally from the time that like you mark, you mark your spot from the time that he, you like place the pile there and you start driving it is about two minutes. Mm-hmm. They just, they just screw it in and it's done. And then on to the next. So you can put, you know, you need four piles to put in. Mm-hmm. By the time you get the machine off the trailer, you're 20 minutes. Like, and that's to mark them and drive them and pack up and get out of there again. Yeah. In 20 minutes. So there's no need to quick. even like necessarily plan a day for piles. You could just plan for that to be the guy that rolls in at 8 a.m. and does it first. Mm-hmm. And then by the time you have your trailer unloaded to start to work to the day, you're it's yeah. ready to go. Foreman guy rolls in. Marks out the piles because he's the boss man. He's the boss. Man. He's got to be like kind of standing around running the tape measure. That's right. And so he or she picks the location of the piles and then swamper, lackey, guess the lowest man on the totem pole, hauls all the tools to the back. And I was yep. like, okay, saws are set up. We're ready to go. We're ready to go. Good. The piles are done. Yep. That's pretty quick. Yeah. So... <clears throat> Uh, like you had said, a lot of this is going to depend on the timing. I I believe that we should preface all of this with this is a retrofit, like a, hmm. a deck that is a retrofit deck, right? Or a redo or on a new house that doesn't have piles. But I think that it is probably just as fast to drill concrete piles if you put the piles in during the foundation of the house. Like if, because in Saskatchewan, we build our houses on piles. If the concrete hmm. guy and the piler is already there. That's right. So they're right. already there. They're doing the foundation for the house. They're like, we got to do piles and then a grade beam and all this stuff. And so they're drilling piles already. Mm-hmm. And if that, if those ones are marked out and the guy in the Bobcat is just driving around or the pile machine is driving around and is like, brum, 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 just blowing holes in the ground. And the cement truck is there and they're pouring pile. Like then that makes the most sense. Do it at that time. Yeah. I still think I that know. that's the right time. I'd still argue that it's, much quicker and more like like time to time steel time to time if you actually recorded the time to drill the hole with the bobcat and then pour the pile the amount of time to do a helical screw pile is less on a stopwatch right yeah but the efficiency is gained when you're doing all of the other piles Mm. right so because pile guy has to stop and then leave and then new guy has to arrive and then pull them out and drill you know but you have to be prepared for that Sure. Planning is everything. So right. I would have had that done. <laughs> <laughs> Before I even built the house, I had the deck planned out. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh that's a, a pro. Uh, a pro. Uh, they they drive really, really fast. Yep. Uh a con. And probably the biggest con is that in your area, engineer like engineers are hit and miss on these things. Some of them like them, lots of them don't, and sometimes the ones that do like with anything, the engineer, they overkill it. It's just like, well, that's 16 feet too. Yeah. Uh, but you don't, but it works differently mm-hmm. than the friction pile. It doesn't need yeah. to be 16 feet. I yeah. said, uh, I said 16 feet. Come on. Is right. that really necessary? No, it's not. <laughs> but that, but every time we've seen an engineer send back a stamp plan with helical piles on it, it's 16 feet deep and it's the three and a half inch pipe and it's, it's like a 16 12 inch, inch helix, 16, yeah. 16 inch 16 helix. Inch disc. It's, it's like, it's massively up, overdone yeah. to what the pile guys are using for their standard mm-hmm. pile for a deck. <laughs> so it's just like, yeah. And so an engineer, I can understand that they won't, they don't want to be accountable for that. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Except they're not accountable because in the fine print of their stamp, nothing like nothing falls back on them. I'm responsible for the ink on the stamp and that's it. Uh, paper. Yeah. That's what they're responsible for. Me so that's, that's the one thing that we run into sometimes here. I don't know that we've met too many engineers that are like, we won't do that, but they, but they're just not, they're not usually fine with the out of the box solution on the engineered pile on the, yeah, on the engineer piles. Cause you can provide your engineering in the piles and be like, here you go. Yeah. But they always want to go deeper, bigger. And sometimes they want to cap them with a concrete cap on it, <laughs> which 
that like I That's had that job one time. There was like the plans came back and it was like this is going to be driven 16 feet deep and it's going to be um, it's going to be capped with a concrete cap on a 12 by 12 concrete cap. Mm-hmm. That was the point of that thing. Why are you making me do that? The the reason I want to do this is to not bring concrete to the job site. Yeah. If I have to bring it anyway, what's the point? And they're like, well, it's just for it's to give you a bigger surface area for for landing your post on, so you don't have to be so accurate. It's like I'm okay with trying to be more accurate. I don't, you know, I don't want the cap. Yeah. Okay, fine. But anyway, so there's yeah, just goofy little things. Like a, that that right? sounds like a builder problem, right? Yeah, like hey, yeah. Let me worry about that if I miss. <laughs> because you, you can move the post hey. a few inches. It's no big deal. Oh, I thought you were getting. I thought yeah. you were skipping ahead. I was like, <laughs> no, no, no. You can move the post a few inches, right? It's like, yeah, yeah you can get bigger plates or offset plates or like the. Saddle can solve that for you. Yeah. Right? Like, or you yeah, have absolutely. offset yeah. plates. If yeah, you yes. miss your mark by two inches or something, like, if you miss by six inches, then, like, that's we on have, you. We <laughs> have a solution screwed. for that. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyway. Um, and, and also your building department. So, here, we you put in a, a permit with piles in it. No problem. That's, yeah. that's accepted. But in some areas where it's just they're not maybe as prevalent there yet or known about yet, they may push back and be like, that's not in the our, mm-hmm. our code book to, as an approved pile option. So no, now you have to go get it engineered. Then we're back to step one. Yeah. And then there's some resistance and it's the same with steel framing. Like whenever you start to do things like this, you're going to have some pushback. Yeah. And so you, you have to really want it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I think that the pros are enough that that people should want this. So there's no like, there's great. only been one pro so far. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> foreshadowing there, though. It's foreshadowing. Yeah. I just foreshadowed that there's, <laughs> there's more to come. Yeah. Uh, Stay tuned. So there's no like pre-engineered like cert- certificate on uh, helical yeah, score. Pop? There is. There is yeah. and However, no one accepts it. Uh, when they want it site specific because the soil conditions can be so different and they operate differently. Whatever. Right. And, like if you did, if you did hit an aquifer and you torque out it, a hundred pounds. It's like, yeah, uh, it's not working anymore. <laughs> so they want to make sure that's like, yeah, yeah. Your 10 foot pile can hold 10,000 pounds. Great. But we need to know that it's going to hold 10,000 pounds on in the backyard that you're drilling it in. Cause you don't know what's under the ground there. Yeah. Mm. That's the thing. Right. And, and so especially you, here out in like white city where there is, well, you'd know this better yep. than we would a lot of like waters and water and voids in the there. ground, six yeah. feet down. Yeah. Um, then sometimes you need to go deeper, but he, but the guys that drive them know this cause they're, they're watching a torque, like whatever you call it, a torque meter, torqueometer, torque, is that a thing? Mm, I can, torque. can get behind that. They're watching sure. their torque. They're watching <laughs> the torque. And you can tell if you've hit a void, the torque drops off. Right. Just spins. go deeper. Yeah. That's the nice thing about those is it's, it's pretty easy to go deeper. Yep. So, um, let's catch up on some comments here. Greenlee construction, uh, says I find the concrete piles sometimes get bumped on new builds. Um, yeah, like they take them out, right? They they suggest that it's like here. I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the pile in, and then right at the last second, it's like ah, don't put those in, take them out. I don't know if the decks are gonna be like that, so they, it gets bumped. Right. I think that's yeah. what it yeah. means by that. Gotcha. I think that makes a lot of sense though for people buying the house. They want to customize their own deck. Yeah, and here I don't know if it's like this ever, but uh, here often the deck is not. It's not in the plans. Like no. the house is built there, and Such like bullshit. there's it's built where a deck's going to go, but it's not like they don't plan it. So, so you have no idea where the piles are going to go. And I don't know that I like often when we have people that have piles po- already poured, they're wanting to do something different anyway. It's like, there's piles there, but they're kind of not in the perfect spots. And then you, and then sometimes you don't use them because like they poured them at eight feet out, but we want to go to 14 feet out in the deck. And so we don't need those. Like, yeah, it happens. Right. So it's almost, it's almost not worth pouring them at the start unless you absolutely have the whole thing planned as being all built at once. But, and then it's all in your mortgage. Silly idea. Who do that? Planning is. Dan Rossi 0909 says, wondering if deck contractors will start getting their own piling equipment in the future. That's happening. Mm. So, yeah, that's happening. That's already now, happening right? right now. Yep. yep. There's some guys uh, like Perfect View. We talked about him last week. Um, he has his own side business doing them. I think uh, the guy that in the Facebook groups, Adam Drova, I think he bought a machine. I think he doesn't have a separate business. It's just like he bought the machine to do his own piles. Yeah. A few guys now that are doing that, and there's lots more guys asking about doing it. Yep. And so it's heading that way for Here sure. Here we go. You're going to have one right now. I mean, you don't really need that much equipment to do them. Nope. You are, you Which is one piece of equipment. Right? It's an expensive piece. And piece a trailer. But even like the, the ones that Post Tech drives with, with your, like your mini um, excavator, you don't, a lot, some systems you don't need something that big, right? Correct. Like the techno metal post guys driving with a remote control, little thing that fits through a 24 inch gate. Mm-hmm. It's just a little machine. I imagine it's probably quite pricey too, given it's a, it's a goddamn robot. But... <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> but it doesn't have to be a big machine. Like you maybe right. could get into this for less. Mm-hmm. You just have to have a, something with a hydraulic on it that can torque it properly. Yeah. Could be smaller. So, um, TC Dex says, if I were doing three or four decks a week with multiple crews, I'd buy my own pile equipment in a heartbeat. Yeah. So that's what we talked about last week too. If you're yeah. a multi-crew operation, then it probably makes sense right away. Yeah, no Your problem. Pattern. Mick Condex says you can take them out and move them too. Hey, you settle down. You maybe that thing's turned. Maybe he read your paper. Is he? Can he see can this? Can he see it? Come on now. Fine. And Greenlee says Techno Post sells two options for engineering, or they did for me in Saskatoon. Yeah, Techno guys in Saskatoon are good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And holy, we got a lot of stuff to catch up on here. Uh, Carly F- Tuds, which is Carly from the Ultimate Deck Shop, Saskatoon, says the deck I visited at Tobin Lake had helical piles 42 feet long. <laughs> oh, that makes sense up there, though. That is crazy. Frost level and Why does it water? make sense up there? Water. Tobin Lake water, water, is like yeah. super north. So, yeah, I mean, when the post tech guy that we, he's done them at least that deep or maybe deeper for, there was some job he did where the solar field or something, maybe, I can't remember what it was that he had to go like 40 or 60 feet deep. And so you just drive 10 feet, put an extension on, drive, put an extension on. Like you can go as deep as you want yeah. until your machine torques out and you hit the crust or the core of the earth, not the crust. <laughs> the core the crust the is the easiest part to get out of. And then when you get the core, it's really easy. Just like, <laughs> yeah, I like that right movie. in there. Like there's that old movie, the core, right? Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. With Ben Affleck. Did it have Ben no. Affleck? No. What was the core? The core was, it had that, what's his name? Had that kid, the geeky looking kid. Macaulay called him. Loser. Did you ever watch that movie? Nope. Mm, sorry. Losing me here. Sorry. Uh, A.E. Carpentry says, I think he means that the house framers break the piles of their booms. Mm. Yeah, that's what I initially thought he meant that they were getting. Oh, they get bumped. They were getting that. bumped, like <clears throat> run into. So they're useless. Not bumped off the right? plans. Yeah. Like if you hit them, they're not good. G.J. Quails, that guy. Yeah, that guy. Eric Teru says over here, helical piles are like track saws. The good deck pillar builders use them. <laughs> Whoa. Ah, shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> This guy. Uh, I don't remember that guy. So He's pretty nerdy. All right, well, maybe, maybe that's movie yeah. night tonight. I don't, know. Core. Core. I don't know that I'd watch that. Okay, so now we've gotten past the engineers and the permit department and everything else. Uh, back to pro. No mess. And this is yeah. another one of my top three. Yeah. Here. It's my Again, f- here. Yeah, because moving sand isn't so bad, but moving the shit that we call soil. Clay. Gumbo. The worst clay on earth. This is awful. You can't shovel the material that's that we built our city on. Nope. And yet you go just east of here, like Pilot Butte, and, and you are shoveling sand. I know that Mike did some piles where they had to hydrovac some buried lines before you put the piles in. They'd say hydro, hydrovac the holes, whatever, and it's just it's just sand. Just it's like the, blows away. It just, yeah, it just falls <laughs> in. Because uh, sand's great, right? Structurally, yep. sand is all, is like the best if it's compacted and whatever, but as soon as it's like loose, then it's, then it's not. Mm-hmm. But anyways, you don't have to go too far to be where you can shovel pretty easily, yeah. but right here in Regina and it, it's close area. It's, it's almost like, like the capital city should have been somewhere else. It was supposed it to should be. have been. Yeah. With a river. <laughs> East of here. In Coppell Valley. <laughs> Stupid politics. So, um, so the mess, is this super, is a huge yeah. one for, if you're digging 12 inches of soil in Washington, not a big deal again. Yeah. So, what is the, anybody good at uh, cubic volume here? Anybody in this area able to do cubic volume? Quickly? I mean, in this room? In this room. In this cubic room? It could be. <laughs> okay. How much material do you have to remove cubic meters? Oh, now you're lost. Now you're going metric? It's <laughs> gone. <laughs> Whatever. Cubic feet then. Yeah, sure. it's all this. When you do this, you got to go, like, because we could, if you give me the cubic feet, I can punch that into Google. I can get the, <laughs> the meter, the metric of it. Well, this but is, a, this is just fairly easy because your holes are typically like 12 inches around. 12 inches around. So one, oh, but 16 feet deep, but yeah. Yeah. So 16 cubic feet then wild, right? That is a lot of material. That's like, that is a lot of material to put onto the ground. Yeah. That's probably like, I don't know if the, what the conversion would be exactly, but probably like maybe like three cubic two or three cubic yards. Right. So that's like, that's a few bobcat bucketfuls mm-hmm. of clay coming out of one hole. Yeah. Can't shovel it. So it's just like this mess of stuff. Yeah. So, and that's the other thing you need a bobcat anyway. Yep. To go that deep. It's gross. 
Yeah, you already have that machinery on site, so now you just you, like you're going to pay extra for them to remove the material too, because yeah. you're not spreading that out. You can't <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, you can't so put like, it oh, just, just grab the rake and just out. kind of yeah. spread it out on the lawn. No. <laughs> no. So the stuff's gross here. You're hauling on a ton of material. So if you're in an area where you have to, your piles have to go deep, it's a huge advantage to be able to do this because there is no mess to clean up afterwards. And you drive the pile and it doesn't displace any dirt. There's like an anthill around the pile yeah. that you step back, you step on <clears throat> yep. and you fly it back out mm-hmm. rather than dealing with it. And even if you can shovel it, it's a whole bunch of work. Like even if you are in sandy place, like you don't want to have to do that if you don't have to. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Um, no mess. So no mess is a huge pro. Back to, yeah. Did we do this right? Con, we're gonna run out. Uh, okay. Back to cons. We're gonna These double things up, or double up pros in the end. Probably okay. are completely overkill for some mm. areas. The areas we've already talked about a bunch. Yeah. So a lot of people on in the Instagram world are always asking Doctor Dex, Jason Russell out in Washington, how come he doesn't use helical piles? Yes. Because. He's regarded as one of the best builders out there. People follow him. They want to do what he does. And they're conflicted because they also look at the side of the thing and be like, well, everybody else in the industry says he look piles are the way to go. But yet this guy doesn't use them. So yeah, what's it why? doesn't work in his market and his, yeah, what's his reason point? just like you guys, I have to, I have to dig 12 inches. Like we just, we dig it with a shovel and we pour a little bit of concrete in there. Yeah. It's overkill for me to drive piles deep into the ground. I don't have to, it doesn't freeze. Here. And it doesn't make sense. Even if it's like, so in Regina, you don't have to do a pile. Like you don't have to do a helical pile. You can mm-hmm. put this thing on the ground, but it's like, what, like it makes sense here to do a pile, right? Like that's the proper way to do it. So it's not like Jason's cutting corners. No, he's like, that's legit a, a viable option. That's a good way to do that in, in his climate. Yeah. So, and this is, yeah. And then, uh, so other places like, where you just don't have to go as deep. It's just, it's just overkill if you don't require it, if it's not required and you can safely build it another way, then, then maybe bringing in big machinery and driving 10 foot or seven foot deep piles is more than needed. And the tar point before there, these things, we're not going to talk about some one of our points, but the cost of these things is about 300 bucks a pile. And so if you look at something like that, where you only have to pour a little 12 by 12 inch thing, it's like, well, you're using like $8 of the concrete right. and 10 minutes to dig the hole. So how do you justify you know, a loaded labor rate of $30 plus materials mm-hmm. versus 300 when you don't need it. Mm-hmm. So it's just, it's like, it's, it's wasteful that way. Yep. Um, Mitcon Dex says Dr. Dex has his equipment for helical piers. So I do know that he, Dr. Dex had mentioned that he has, he's now going to be like, I don't know, sponsored by some helical pile company. So now he'll be using helical piles. Um, but for years, forever, for the last 30 years, he's not. Until somebody so. paid him to do it. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 So. Um, Precision says Jason has converted to piles. He just bought a mask or helical pipe pier driver. Yeah. So that's happening. I saw that in his stories a little while ago that he was, his next job was going to have them now. So even, even the guy who doesn't need him is now using them. Uh, back to the pros and somebody touched on this before. I think it was Mitt Condex. They're movable. Now, you hope you don't have to run into this situation. Really good. Really good. But if you do I thoroughly enjoy this, part. boy, is it nice that you can do that? Because when you pour a concrete pile in the wrong spot. <laughs> so this happened to me. I have had this. We did that deck out at um, like just west of town last year. The one for climb. Okay. Yeah. And I laid those piles out and I, I don't know what I did. I hooked onto the house at the wrong spot and I ran like, I ran. I marked out three piles in the wrong spot. Mm. I missed them by, I think I missed them by a foot or a two foot. Maybe the house had a one foot offset and the engineer wanted it off of this side of the house or this part of the house. And I did it off the, the inside of the house. And so we finished it and then I stepped back and I was kind of like, the machine was still there. Mike hadn't left yet, but I was looking at the piles and was like, but on the plans, these are all supposed to be in a row. And it was like, Dunk, dunk, there was two piles and then jogged over two feet and then three more piles. And I was like, uh, oh, no, 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 no. Those are all supposed to be in the same line. And like, like you were supposed to be 12 feet off the house here, but then it jogged or something. Yeah. And you kept going 12 feet, but you're supposed to be 13. In the yeah. Or whatever it was. Right. Yeah. But I remember putting them down and then was like, oh, oh yeah. Nope. That's no good. We have yeah. to. And so Mike was like, oh, no big deal. Backed him out. Could you imagine if you'd done that with concrete? <laughs> he laid him, drilled yeah. the thing, poured him. 
Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. This one doesn't matter until it does. And then it's the most important one on the list. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right? So yeah. Mike also, we, when we say Mike, we're referring to the post tech Regina franchise operator here who does yeah. a lot of piles for our, our contractors. And for us, when we, when we're doing a managed install and yeah. not, and every company can do this, but yeah, we just, yeah, this is a universal thing for sure. He had his sister-in-law got hosed by a contractor and then, <laughs> The laugh, the last laugh on that is on us because that guy ended up hosing us. He did hose us as well, um, <clears throat> but before he hosed us, he hosed Mike's sister-in-law, and he was supposed to build a deck and a fence. And so we went out there, and he, he had Mike drive all these piles because sister-in-law, so she was obviously getting a good deal on them. But this guy hired Mike, and he had marked the piles and said, "Put them all here." And I can't remember what there was. There was there was quite a few. There was at least eight or nine. It might have been might have been twelve or thirteen, but there's quite a few. And so all these piles get driven. This guy shows up, does. I don't, I don't know what, what the f- he was doing, but anyways, neither did he, neither did he. And so, and then bailed with her, with her deposit and never showed back up. The fence was like, fence was not even close to finish. The deck <clears throat> just had random pieces of lumber, like kind of like box framed around, like hanging and like stuff wasn't even fast and was laying in the ground. And like, it was just, oh, no. it was like, it was like, I don't know. I've never seen anything that bad. Mike uh, wanted me to come out there to say like, Hey, what can we is any of this usable? Can I, can we make this work? And I went out and looked at it. And I was like, dude, I don't even know. I can't even figure out what the plan was by looking at what's been done here. Like, mm-hmm. I don't even know what shape this deck's supposed to be. There's just shit laying everywhere. Like I have no idea what I he was trying to do. You sent me a picture of that. And I was like, no, no, no. And you're like, yep, no, this is real. I, this isn't Photoshopped or anything. I'm standing right here looking at this. This is, this is a guy that's building a deck. It looked like, it looked like drove, drove, th- I couldn't even figure out where the beams were. You know how like F and sure he didn't yeah. have tracks off on the, <laughs> <laughs> and Maybe and that was a, a long bike. bike ride too, because <laughs> yeah. it was intense. <laughs> um, but I remember like, if you go to your job, you were just talking about, and mm-hmm. you saw it even, even in the wrong layout, if you saw that, you'd be like two piles here, three piles here. You'd be like, Oh, well clearly there's a beam, there's a beam here beam. and there's a beam here. Yep. Like you would know how that's getting laid out. I went out there and I was like, I can't make sense of where the beams are even supposed to be going on this thing. Like I have no idea. And all it looked like was like piles have been driven in posts set in the piles. And then it was like a forklift had driven over and just spilled some lumber on top. And some of them happened to land on things. And then <laughs> others were like on, but then on the ground and like, Oh, like that. It, was it was so like, bad. It was wild. And then, so he takes off sewers her for a bunch of money. Mike Change comes to the rescue. Like, can you design something to do this? Whatever. I was like, I can, but I don't know how to use these piles. Like I think they're gonna have to be moved. So thankfully, they could be. Mike Move brings on. the machine back, pulls out 10 piles, give or take, and re drives them where we need to be for no extra cost. Like, obviously, for if somebody had to do that, he would charge the labor to come do that. But you're not, you're not paying another. Th- you're not out the pile. Well, you're right. You're not out the pile again. You're not driving another $300 pile again, right? Which with concrete. Yep. At <clears throat> 16 feet. Can't pull you would be. Yep. Yeah. Like you're just driving a new one and you better hope that they don't need the old one to be gone now or else that's right. another huge oh, job. Unbelievable. But anyway, so that when it, when it's needed, that's a huge, huge, huge pro. Yeah. Movable. Deadly. Next con is roots and rocks. Roots and rocks. So again, here we have sounds like a very, band. It should be a band. We should start this band. I'm not starting a band. <laughs> oh. We got the roots and the rocks. <laughs> no, no. Oh. No, you're supposed to step in there. I, you're like, oh, okay. Oh, um, That's ACDC. You can't do <laughs> yeah. that. that. That was ACDC. It's the Angus. ACDC cover band. <laughs> yeah. Roots and Rocks. Yeah. yeah. From Saskatchewan. Uh, Angus would be so mad at you. <laughs> Again here, we don't run into this very often. No, because we just have clay. There's nothing in the ground. Shovel. It's clay. clay. There's not many rocks in the ground here. If you hit There's something, no trees. If you hit something here, it's like... Somebody put it there. <laughs> it's a chunk of concrete from yeah. an old foundation or yeah. something. Oh, there was a house here. Um, but you might hit roots. And the nice thing about piles to turn this into a pro is that you can directionally drill those to a certain extent. If you yeah. hit an obstruction, you can kind of, you can go around it. He can drive those things. Like I've watched Mike drive a pile under a sidewalk. You know what I mean? Like if the pile mm-hmm. needs to be right next to the sidewalk, but you got a 16 inch plate on or a 12 inch plate, he can kind of start out here, drive it underneath and straighten that thing up and get the, get the post right beside the sidewalk. Like mm-hmm. you can drive around things. Um, only once in, in, I don't know how many piles I did with him when I was building a few, like call it like a couple hundred. I don't know. Only once did we ever hit something that he like that the pile at the end of the day, when it was all said and done was really kind of not ideal. Like it was not where it was supposed to be perfectly. And it was kind of crooked a little bit. And like we could, we made it work, but, um, but it was an obstruction that we couldn't really make it our way around. Right. 
But if you're in a place that does have a lot of like freaking, some guys are digging up boulders out of the ground. If you have that and you hit that with a pile, you're not going through it. And, and no. you, you haven't dug a hole to even expose it and know what you're dealing with. Yeah. Like, and get out sonar and start poking around or something. Mm-hmm. So if you hit something and you can't get by it and you try to go around it, you're kind of screwed. You just like, now you're going to need to dig and expose that thing anyway and find out what it is or like mm. plan B needs to come into effect. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's one con is that, um, they work perfectly awesomely when they work. And then if there's something in the way, sometimes it's a bit of a challenge. Yep. Next pro. Um, here's a story from Finkelberry 1000. Mike did some piles for us last year. Had to go through asphalt, asphalt, Asphalt. Ash. Ash. Asphalt? Asphalt. Um, went through it like butter. <laughs> so as, asphalt. Asphalt. Um, and New England Deck no. Pros says, I have been using piles <laughs> on most of my jobs this year. Every job has been rocky. Yeah, and got. they work, obviously. I don't know if he means he's been using helical piles or concrete piles. You said piles. Just and rocky, asphalt. like as in rocks, or like it's not working out that well for you? It's been kind of rocky. rocky. Yeah. <laughs> Right? It's <laughs> been okay. There's a lot of flex to that statement right there. I'm not sure how to take it. <laughs> All right. So small rocks usually not bad because it screws. It can kind of go around things at the same time if it's driving at the same time, right? But anyway, uh, number pro. Number pro. Ready to build. Yeah, this is driving you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's awesome. <laughs> Ready to build is another big one for me too. And we talked, we touched on this with the quick install. Yeah. Quick install and quick readiness to build. Because as soon as the pile is driven and he pops the collar off, <laughs> hey yo, <laughs> pops the sleeve off the end of the pile, you're ready. Ready to you go. Put ready your top to party. I'm usually ready to party as soon as I pop the top off. <laughs> right. Just saying. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's the awesome part about it is that like guys could start working before he's even done driven the pile. He drives one. It's like, okay, now we go get our saddle set and we'll cut our posts for this one. <laughs> like you're just, you can work right behind him. And when yeah, he drives out, go. as long go. as you have your high vis vest on. Right. Because he's got a big piece of machinery. you got to have your high right. vest yeah. on. Yeah. But there's no cure time. Like there with piles, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to, you don't have to let wait him sit a day and, and then come back and go time. Yeah. You're just ready to go right away. Uh, Eric Teru, New, Eng- New England Deck Pro says that it, he was talking about helical piles and <laughs> still undetermined whether Rocky means <laughs> some rocky mm. ground or if it didn't go so well. Yeah. Uh, Eric Teru says, usually it has to be a pretty big rock that they can't work around. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Precision Construction says the piers here have what they call rock pitch, and they do pretty well. Uh, I wonder what does that mean. So Simcoe texts me that a bit. Uh, which one? Rock pitch. Yeah. What's rock pitch? The piers here have what they call rock pitch, and they do pretty well. He says. Cool. Right, I'm intrigued. What are you talking? Maybe about they're this? really steep. Maybe the pitch on the like maybe the pitch on the plate. Oh, like is it's like steep. a. L- like the threading, yeah. the threading is like, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Travels longer. So the void between sure. maybe rock pitch. That would make sense. That's what I'll bet up. you. That's it. I'm doing it. I'm going with it. Simcoe says this week's episode smokers. Yeah. Hey so, Wade, no Sim- idea. Simcoe Inside. texted me yesterday and was like, I know that you're going to be kind of biased on this Bradley or Traeger. And I was like, well, here's what I know. Traeger guys have to go on to all social platforms and tell you how amazing a Traeger smoker is. <laughs> yeah. And Bradley smoker guys are busy just running the smoker. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so I was like, I, obviously I have a Bradley smoker because uh, I was able to get it at a really good price. <laughs> yeah. Shane discounted it. <laughs> it was pretty good for me. <laughs> Cause it fell off the truck. Just about, I caught it right before, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but um, so anyways, I kept the box for it actually was in such good condition. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I've never had any issues with my Bradley smoker. I really like it. I don't mind the biscuit feed. One of the, one of the things I don't like about Bradley smokers is that the, there are a lot of biscuits that end up collecting at the bottom and it, it'd be nice if there was a, you know, I think with the trigger, the smaller pellets burn off a little bit better, but I don't know that for sure. So I can't, I can't. I'll give you a solid opinion about a Traeger, but what I can say is that Traeger people are like, they're like proud Traeger people. You know, it seems weird. Yeah, it's a bit of a cult following in the Traeger stuff, more so than it is on Bradley. I mean, and the Big Green Egg, right? There's there's a couple cults. Yeah, <laughs> Traeger and the Big Green Egg and all these guys. Whereas, yeah, the Bradley is a little bit more of a, just kind of a, 
a layman's man's like smoke. Like it's just, but it's really it just good. Works. It's, it's like it's just good. smoke, right? Yeah. And there's a there's a there is a wicked community for it too. Yeah, it's just that people don't go out there and bragging about their Bradleys. Yeah. Anyway, um, but I've read that the Bradley. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Now we're He's on the guy who's smokers. complaining that we're always off topic, and here he throws this little linchpin in you. So <laughs> I have read the reason that those pucks always aren't completely burned is because, like, they intentionally advance them every twenty minutes because they don't want the if you if you, you don't sm- want charcoal. Correct, smoke. Yeah, right. You don't want the the burnt wood to start smoking off because then that kills the flavor. So they intentionally kind of like speed them through a little bit faster. But anyways, it does. You go through some pucks. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, Especially when you're doing a brisket. Holy boy. Yeah. Rock pitch is the degree. You were right. The degree angle of the helix is different so that it cuts differently. It goes into rocky soil really well. So that yeah. makes sense to me. Okay. I wonder if those don't torque up as quickly because it's more aggressively driving. That's like mm. with a bit of a turn, it would drive further. So I wonder if they take a little bit more to torque up. I don't know. But you could solve that by making a bigger pile too yep. or a bigger plate or whatever. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Cool. Um, so there's a, other options. Good. Here we go. We got big green egg shouts out. A couple exclamation <laughs> points. We have other guys like Traeger and Trex and Azek and Bradley. Um, where are we at now? Ready Last to build. One. Yeah, it was ready to build. We're going to double up. Oh, on ready to build. I guess we didn't touch on that too much. But well, what, a, it's, what, what are you going to say? Pretty self-explanatory. It's ready to go the it's second they're driven in. Done. That's one of the biggest efficiencies there is, is that part there. Yeah. So you say, um, So you save money... And time, I guess. Oh, and yeah. then time is like Sounds money. Horrible, time right? is money. So now you got extra money. Oh, you doubled your you money. Got, and time. Retire. You could you, you could use your deck faster. Sounds, sounds like an infinite loop. <laughs> mm-hmm. Final pro. How were you able to retire early? Mm, I started using helical screw <laughs> files. <laughs> this, yeah. I made extra money. Three jobs in <laughs> and, I, and residual income. <laughs> Passively just collects now because the time and the money loop. You know how it works. Uh, you know how it works. Of course I know how it works. <laughs> Who doesn't know how it works? Right, exactly. Um, okay. If anybody in the Instagram has some more cons or pros to this, because uh, we can't add them because I said five and three. <laughs> <laughs> Bryce pigeonholed us into this number of things. Undoubtedly, there might be a few more. So share them in Instagram. We can talk about them in a second. But number the no, last pro that we had down here is they are more effective against frost heave than a friction pile is what we're referring to here. Yes. Or than like than pretty much any other solution, I guess, because the other options would be to not do friction piles here. And those <laughs> don't battle frost at all. Unless so. they're done properly. Like if you, if you do the pile properly, it works, right? You do a bell pile and it's 16 yep. feet deep. And I well, guess well. at similar depths, maybe we should have prefaced that with, yeah. like if you're going to go 10 feet and 10 feet, the helical pile is going to outperform the concrete pile of the frost heave. Correct. Here. <laughs> Correct. So, um, and just because they work differently. I was just thinking about this this morning as I was waiting for my wife <laughs> to get out of the shower so I could leave. I thought you weren't going to do that. I was. <laughs> I didn't. She's not here. <laughs> I didn't. Um, I was thinking about that, how the difference between a concrete pile and a, and a helical pile and how they work differently. And it's in my head, it was almost like, it's kind of like a nail and a screw. If you think about it, cause I was thinking like, well, the reason that the concrete piles don't work against frost sometimes is cause they're not deep enough. So there's not enough friction there to stop the ground from pulling the pile up. Mm-hmm. And so it kind of works like mm. a nail. It, it goes in straight. And if it needs to come out, it can be pulled straight out if you pull enough. And the deeper the nail is, the more friction there is, the harder it is to pull out. Kind of similar to, to that. And whereas a screw pile is more like a screw. Cause it, I've always wondered, not always, for quite a while, I wondered. It's pretty deep shit for a Saturday morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now you understand why I'm mentally not here. I'm like, I'm pretty, pretty out there today. Yeah. But I always wondered too, is like how, why is the torque of the screw piles the only thing that matters? Is like, is there no bearing weight of like compressive strength of that plate at the bottom? Like that way, you know, why is it just torque that matters? And then until, and then this morning I was thinking, well, it's like a screw. doesn't matter how far you put the screw in. You're not going to. You're not going to pound it the rest of the way with a hammer. Yeah. They don't go straight in. It mm-hmm. has to turn and torque to, to, to advance into something. Right. Yeah. And then to come back out, it also has to turn and torque. You're not going to hook a claw hammer onto a screw and pop it out. No. So that's why it's works so good against frost. Cause it anchors itself in the ground and doesn't matter what the ground does to that pile. First of all, it's like a s- silky smooth shaft. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it is. Yeah, so <laughs> the ground's not going to grip it to begin with. Not, much, if, not much veining on it. It's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty straight. Pretty slick. We need that, like, that music. <laughs> and, <laughs> I'm sure you can edit that in. <laughs> and then, like, with Techno Metal Pulse, they put that gimmicky green sleeve that's meant to, like, 
Yeah. Whatever. Increase friction. Nobody likes that. <laughs> Sleeve that goes over top. That's for sure. Yeah, you but. can't get a good feel for the pile. <laughs> So anyway, like it anchors itself in the ground. Even if it did get a hold of the pile, it would have an awful time trying to pull it straight up. It needs to reverse turn to, yep. to come up. So they yep. just, they're effective. As long as they get below the frost, that's the point, I guess. A foot below the frost, they're effective. There you go. Concrete, you basically have to double frost took plus. took a long time to get to that part. So oh, we got it. Got there. Scott's, so Scott's got a great point. They're amazing here. That's for sure with deep frost. And... Uh, <clears throat> Clay soils. Like we don't run into the cons very often here, but we take advantage of all the pros. <laughs> so yes. They're amazing here. Yeah. Uh, Scott from Precision says, did you mention the pro of not having to wait for footing inspection? Right. So time money loop. Here we are. Time money loop. It's no. Back. And that's a good point because uh, we don't run into that here because they don't do pile inspect. Well, because they don't inspect say. things here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Things don't get inspected here. <laughs> they just like pull up. Just have to pay for they it. Just park on the street and they're like, I don't know. <laughs> did you piles back there? Yeah, I did piles back yeah. there. Good to go then. How deep is it? Well, it's fairly deep. Fairly deep. <laughs> good. good enough. <laughs> Doesn't matter to me. I'm not at fault. Ha ha ha. And away they go. Well, I'm tired. It's that deep. I, it took me a bit. Uh, so that's a great point for places that do pile inspections is that, and for those who don't know, in a lot of markets, you dig your hole for the concrete pile. You can't pour concrete into it. Until somebody comes and measures the depth and says, whoa, looks good. That's the proper depth. Wow. That's a lot of time. Then you can fill your hole. With you just stand there and you wait for the guy or the, you stand and wait for the inspector to show up twice. Cause you have to wait I'd and then, so then they inspect and then you pour the concrete and then you wait for that to, I'd be so set. pissed. I like, and then what if he doesn't show up or he's delayed or whatever, and you got a crew sitting around, like you almost have to plan to not do it. You, this is again, this is where you just, you go through, you dig your holes and then you move you schedule something else after that and be like, but then you have to be there. Uh, like, inspector, you have to be on site with the inspector <laughs> to go through it. It's a, that would be a nightmare scenario here, rightly or wrongly. They don't do pile inspections. You put that you're doing a concrete pile on a deck and they're like, sounds good. And then. The inspector I'll comes take your out, word for that. The inspector comes out and is like, yep, that's concrete. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, you could fill the whole thing with packing peanuts and then do a 12 inch <laughs> concrete cap on top. And you'd be like, yeah, yeah. it looks pretty good there. Right? So that doesn't slow us down here, but great point that in many markets it would for sure. Yep. Time money loop. This is so time good. money loop. Time money loop. Premier yards and garages says I found a guy in Edmonton VM that does them for pretty cheap. My, only about 50 bucks more than my cost to put in concrete. Yeah. So here with mm-hmm. the, again, with that proper depth pile, pile, the helical would be the cheaper option. Edmonton's like same. Well, they'd be, yeah, it'd be similar there, right? Same level of hell yeah. freezing over. <laughs> yeah. They got a hockey team and being that it's 99 episode, one of the best ah. players of all time. Another point from Mitcon Dex. Then it rains. Right. Oh boy. Yeah. yeah. Concrete. And you have to redo your pile hole. No, oh. your walls of your pile hole cave uh. in or fills up or whatever. Then you're bringing in. Yeah. You're laughing if you got it poured. Cause then you can just drop some poly over top of your concrete. You're good to go. Right. Yeah. Whoever thought of concrete stupidest, but if you don't have those holes covered and all of a sudden it rains or something and it washes like backfills a hole in a bit and fills it up with water. Now you got to bring in a water pump, pump so, the water out, uh, redig the hole. I don't know. At that point, you have to recall for an inspection. Just a yeah. lot of, How are a lot of going? time. Things, are, here's another loop. things are going great. I'm having the best time. Can't wait to do the rest of this pile. <laughs> yeah. Get started on your deck sometime next week. Maybe. Sorry. Instead of piles, we decided to drill 10 small pools. <laughs> yeah. 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 Basically. Um, the VM in my comment is a typo. Please disregard. Good. <laughs> I was like, Edmonton VM. What is that? Yeah. What is that? Van Morrison. Yeah. Um, Very then Rossi 0909 says for my addition, the contractor took a photo with a shovel in it to pr- prove the depth. Of its, foundation. <laughs> it's about this deep. How deep is it? This deep. This, is very deep. <laughs> this shovel right here. I digged it as deep as my shovel would go. I couldn't go any deeper. <laughs> I like, I would have lost my shovel. Yeah. <laughs> then I've been pissed. Whatever. That's a good, you have to show the depth, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they don't believe tape measures cause they think everybody's lying. Yeah, I use a metric tape measure, so it makes my piles look deeper. <laughs> How deep is it? Looks about 300. 300 what? Your guess is as good as mine. Yeah, 300 tape measures. Multiplied divided by 10. Yeah. 
So there it is. Piles. Helical piles are awesome. That's a moral of the story that uh, we've been telling for years. That's for sure. Bryce, what's your, uh, what have you learned? What have you, what have I learned? Yeah. Like what do you, did you know about them before we got into, before you started working here? I had no idea. Tech stuff. It wasn't something you ran across in your surveying days. My surveying days. No, they only did uh, concrete piles in my surveying days Mm -hmm. and steel piles. They like, Oh yeah. Big ones. Yeah. Like the ones they pound in. Bash them like into the boom, ground. Boom. Those things are amazing. Those are cool. Yeah. 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 That's what we should build our next deck on. But also. It's like an I-beam that gets pounded yeah. into the ground. Exactly. Yeah. How deep? Uh, 70 feet. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> even surveying though, like we had benchmarks all the time for elevation and some of them would just be a four foot pin in Saskatchewan and they wouldn't move hmm. at all. Interesting. Yeah. Cause the whole earth goes like that. Yeah. But sometimes it would squeeze them out too. Yeah. Like a zit. Like a zit. Yeah. Like that sliver I just stuck out of my hand. Uh, Precision Construction <laughs> says another big pro for us is that with the helical pier, the customer has some sort of guarantee that the pile can hold the specified weight. With concrete, you're guessing without a soil sample. Yeah. So with concrete piles, do you have to get like ground testing done? No. With any Not engineering? Here. No. Because like you were like a site specific, yeah. So how do they know what type of soil you have? I'm guessing on commercial projects they probably do. I don't have to get some. I, I don't know that. Don't know. So, yeah. It shouldn't matter. Like either one of those, it's like that. If if it requires soil testing for one of them, it probably would require it for the other. Like except, you want to know what you're going into. Except it seems like for the screw pile, once you hit that torque, like that's the number. Right. Well, you would know better. Yeah. yeah like, there's no testing. So if you drive a screw pile to within six inches of a of an aquifer or a void down there or something like that, you're going to know because the soil is going to get looser and your torque will drop up a little bit, drop off a little bit, I suspect, before you'd actually hit the void. Whereas a pile, like you would just drill it and be like, yeah, there's a bottom to the hole. Yeah. So, <laughs> so fill it up. And then that may, like, who knows, maybe you do you have Bonk. falls out in the bottom. <laughs> yeah, your exactly. pile is just like... <laughs> Can you make the Mario sound? <laughs> Whatever it is, like the pile just like, where the hell did that where the hell did that go? I swear there was one here yesterday. So I have seen that happen. Have you? Yeah, with those big steel piles. They'll drop like really? two or three feet. Like in what yeah, yeah. Over a day. Like you come back the next day and oh, they've just sunk. Really? Yeah. Because they they didn't plan they didn't take a soil sample deep enough. Yeah. So <sighs> interesting. Yeah, I would think like I'm no I'm no geological engineer, soil sample yeah. tester, site guy, whatever. But yeah, my, I, I suspect that if don't you, let that slow you down, <laughs> <laughs> like, get after it. <laughs> I suspect that if you hit a certain torque on the screw pile, it's unlikely to like. Well, that's your test, right? Go, yeah, exactly. It's kind of like if it's it a torque to the right, it's a quantifiable torque. number that like, doesn't matter good. what you hit, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So interesting. Um, I have heard stories of guys say that while they're driving the screw piles, it's like they're going and all of a sudden it's just like, it kind of like mm-hmm. <laughs> fires through something, hits a void, whatever. But as long as you get something solid again on the other side of that, um, premium yards and garages says episode 100 topic pros and cons of steel. <laughs> I hate this word. <laughs> Cause I can't say it. Cause I can't say it. <laughs> I can't read. Saisons. 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 C A I S O N S. I only ever hear that word. I never use it. Uh, and Quigley Cabral says in Wisconsin, commercial requires soul testing for concrete, <laughs> not for residential. <laughs> what are your intentions with this pile? <laughs> yep. How long do you plan on being on this earth? <laughs> uh, yeah. So there's some additional, <laughs> yeah, additional <clears throat> testing required there. So, okay. That's it. Episode 99. <gasps> Shut it down. We're at 58. Tune in next, next week. Next one's a big one. Hundred. Don't miss Ooh. hundred. It won't be live. Are you coming? <laughs> nope. Me was that a question to me? Nope. It's done. There's what's done is done. Oh yeah, did you count the time on this one? I or didn't, did you just but I, knew, I just remember now that we had to <laughs> hit that to start that. So um anyways, uh subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're getting close to the end of the season here, so we're gonna be popping out some more content up in there pretty quick. Here comes. So tune in. See you next week. Sweet. Hey, 
Thank you for listening to the Ultimate Deck Podcast. Now you know what we're about. Uh-huh. Check the site, come and shop. UltimateDeckShop.com. Hit us right away for sponsorships. So tell us if you want to collaborate. Let's go. Check us out on any social networks. Thank you for listening. <laughs>